So the average atomic masses, average atomic masses. And what we want to point out here is if you look at periodic table, let's use carbon because we were talking about carbon. If you look at your periodic table, you're going to see a box that looks like this. Atomic number six because there's six protons. But the average atomic mass is going to be 12.01. But atoms, the individual atoms, have masses of whole numbers. That's not a whole number. This is an average. right? So individual atoms have masses of whole numbers. However, samples of quadrillions, huge numbers of atoms, have a few atoms that are either heavier or lighter, because they're isotopes, right? They have varying number of neutrons, due to the difference, uh, uh, different numbers of neutrons present. Right, so uh, for example, if we look at this, we know from from uh, the past that there is carbon twelve, it's very very common. There's carbon thirteen, which is less common. And there's carbon fourteen, used for radiocarbon dating. That's even less common than that, because there is so much more carbon twelve than there is carbon thirteen or fourteen. And by the way, the mass of carbon twelve is twelve. The mass of carbon thirteen is thirteen. The mass of carbon-14 is 14, right? Because atoms have masses of whole numbers. The reason that this is 12.01 is because there is so much more of carbon-12 than there is of carbon-13 or 14 that it drives the average atomic mass of carbon down, right? According to this, there is very little carbon-13 and carbon-14. Another example. Let's look at copper. Copper has an average atomic mass of 63.55. Uh, this is a, a little bit more evenly distributed, but there's going to be a copper 63. And there's going to, oh, there's a C. There's a C. And there's going to be a, a copper 64. Now, because this is 63.55, this relationship, the abundance here is going to be a lot closer to 50-50, right? A lot closer to 50-50. There's just going to be a, just a little bit more carbon, or sorry, carbon, copper 64 than there is carbon 63, but it's, it's, it's a lot closer to 50-50 distribution, especially compared to something like carbon here, where it, the vast majority of carbon in our world is carbon-12. So percent abundance, it's the percentage of atoms in a natural sample, meaning you know it actually represents the natural world. Percentage of atoms in a natural sample of the pure element represented by a particular isotope, by a particular isotope. So what we do, if we want to calculate the percent abundance, <coughs> we're going to take the number of atoms of a given isotope. So this would be like the, the carbon-12. We, if we're going to only pick out carbon-12, or if we're only going to pick out carbon-13, or only pick out carbon-14, uh, the number of atoms of that particular isotope would go on top. On the bottom, the denominator would be the total number of atoms of all isotopes of that element. So on top, we'd put the number of, let's say we were doing percent abundance of carbon-13. We would count all the carbon-13 atoms, put them on top on the numerator, and they would count all the atoms of carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14, add them all together, put them on the denominator, right? Divide those out, multiply by 100%, that is your percent abundance, right? It's kind of typical basic elementary statistics. But now let's get into the more stoichiometry part of it, right, which is counting and accounting for things. Counting by mass, okay, and this is what we do in chemistry when we do stoichiometry. When particles are small, right, counting, counting of matter is, is very, very con inconvenient, right? Uh, for example, uh, when you go to the store and you buy sugar, you just buy a five-pound bag rather than asking for 647 million sugar crystals, right? You buy a pound of peanuts rather than asking for 350 peanuts. <clears throat> and so that's what we're doing with atoms, right? And this system works wonderfully well if you know the average atomic mass. So you, if you know how much the average peanut weighs, Right? You have a very good idea of how many peanuts you're going to get if you buy one pound of peanuts. If you know the, uh, the, ma the average mass of a sugar crystal, 
you'll know uh, uh, about, you know, roughly, about how many sugar crystals you're getting when you buy five pounds of sugar. Now, um, the only reason that uh, I wanted to do a little background of the mass uh, spectrometry, mass spectrometer, I always mess up that word, even when I was in college, um, is because not necessarily there are going to be questions asked about the mass spectrometer on the AP exam, but it's, n it's definitely not uncommon for uh, the exam to pose a question and give you the data in the format of a mass spectrometer readout. And so while you don't necessarily have to know what the mass spectrometer is, knowing what the mass spectrometer is and knowing what it does is gonna make you less nervous when you go to interpret the data. And it's the data that you're supposed to interpret that the question is actually asking you about, right? What they're actually assessing your, your, your knowledge. So we're just seeing if we can make you a little bit more comfortable when those types of questions come around. Um, so we can use a mass spectrometer to determine isotopic composition, right? So that's just the percentage due to each isotope, right? So again, referring to carbon-12, 13, to 14, what percentage uh, is carbon-12? What percentage is carbon-13? What percentage is carbon-14? You can use a mass spectrometer, uh, spectrometer to figure that out. So uh, mass spectrometer will actually give you a readout, something like we see here, these two graphs right here. Um, what we would do here, the example here is we're using neon, a natural sample of neon. So we load a pure sample of natural neon or some other substance. Here we're using neon. The areas um, or the peaks or heights of the, of the bar indicate the relative abundances of carbon, sorry, carbon, gosh darn it, neon 20, neon 21, or neon 22. Notice that it, the, the atomic number is always 10, right? Because neon has 10 protons. So that's not going to change. The number of protons is not going to change. As long as we're talking about neon, it's always going to be 10 protons. What may change is the number of neutrons. In neon 20, we have 10 neutrons. In neon 21, we have 11 neutrons. And in neon 22, we have 12 neutrons. So let's interpret this data. So uh, as we look at this first graph, we always want to make sure we read the uh, the axes. We get to have no idea of what a mass spectrometer is, but if we read the, the axes, we have a chance to interpret what's being said. So the ion beam intensity at the detector, right? Intensity, how much of it there is, right? Ion beam intensity at the detector. If we go back. Right, remember these ion beams are being deflected and then being interpreted by the detector plate. Right, so if there is a large intensity hitting right here, but a small intensity hitting right here, that means that most of what is being deflected has a smaller mass, a very small amount of it has a heavier mass. And down here on the x axis, we have the mass number. So we see that there is a very large peak at 20, at a mass number of 20. We have a, a much smaller peak at 22 and an even smaller peak at 21, right? So this tells us that there's more intensity at 20, much less at 22 and even less at 21. This tells us that there is more neon 20 then there is neon 22 and even less neon 21. So if we switch over to this second graph, this is more of a bar graph, uh, and we see <coughs> uh, these, are, these are percentages, right? So the relative number of atoms in this sample, the mass number. So again, we're talking about neon 20, 21, and 22. So neon 20, this is fully 91% of all the natural neon that exists in the world. Neon 22 is 0.3%, 0.3%. Now you wouldn't have to guesstimate from this peak what that percentage is, right? You, you need the machine to do that for you to actually interpret the, um, the very specifics of, of the, of the uh, peak intensity. And then Neon 22 makes up about 9%, makes up about 9% of naturally occurring neon, right? 
And it's that simple. That's all you'll have to do with a mass spectrometer.